Today, we're going to talk about inversions on the guitar and how important they really are. Now, I don't want to learn inversions. I just want to play power chords. You can stick with power chords. However, learning your inversions will unlock your capability to navigate the fretboard unlike never seen before. <sighs> I do like the sound of unlocking hidden powers within myself. Who doesn't? I don't even know what an inversion is though, so it must not be important. An inversion is a chord played in a different order. Today, you will learn one major chord, along with its two inversions, and how this super simple concept will open the doors to unlocking the fretboard. All right, you have my attention. Let's hear what all this inversion nonsense is about. If you don't understand, no worries. We're only gonna be focusing on three notes and only three numbers today. Hmm, keeping it simple. That's my style. When working with inversions on the guitar, the easiest way to visualize this is to assign a number to each one of the notes in your chord. I don't know anything about chords or notes, and I really wish I didn't have to be stuck on this guitar. You don't need to know your notes for this lesson, so don't fret. Huh. I really want you to focus on associating these chords with numbers. Focus is something that might be an issue for me. That's why you're stuck on the head of a guitar, Matthew. You're kind of forced to focus now. Fine, let's get this lesson over with. First, let's figure out our one, three, and five on one string. First, we need to pick a root note, which by the way, if I say root, I mean think of root as the home base to whichever chord you're playing. I'm going to choose A as our note, which is on the sixth string and the fifth fret. Hooray, we have now chosen our root note or note number one. Now to find our major third, we have to move up four frets, or half steps, and bam, we have ourselves our third interval. Now, from the third interval, we're gonna move up three frets, or half steps, and look at that, we have hit our perfect fifth interval. Now we have our one, our three, and our five, don't have enough fingers, uh, which creates an A major. <sighs> Okay, so that's a major chord. We have our one, three, and five played on one string. However, if we want to play this as a chord, we need to play these notes practically at the same time. The only way to do this is to play these notes over three different strings. One of the unique aspects of a guitar compared to something like a piano is we can play the same notes in multiple parts of the guitar. As opposed to the piano, there are no duplicate notes. Makes the guitar much harder. <sighs> Piano sounds easier. I knew I should have learned the piano first. Let's take that third interval which is being played on the ninth fret of the sixth string and let's move that over to the fourth fret on the fifth string. You hear that? Same note. Okay, I think I understand. You're playing the same notes in different places? That's right, so now let's do the same thing with that pesky fifth interval. We don't want to play on this string. Get on out! Let's go ahead and move this to the fourth string at the second fret. You've done it! You have now formed a major chord in the root position! How exciting! However, this is only the first step, as today's lesson is all about inversions. Only the first step? Oh, I thought it was over, and I thought I was a guitar master already! So now we get to take this chord we built and play the same chord in a different way. Inversions might sound scary, but the concept is pretty simple. All an inversion is, is taking the same notes and playing them in a different order. Uh, I think I get it. At least we're only dealing with three numbers here. Uh, I'm horrible at math. Currently, we are playing our one note or root note on the bottom. And then the next string has the third interval reserved. And then the next string has the fifth. So it looks like this. One, three, five. However, what if we were to play the third interval first, so it would look like this. Three, five, one. Playing your chord like this would be the first inversion, as it's the same notes, only played in a different order. So, let's do it. Let's play that third interval on the lowest string, the sixth string, starting on fret nine. Now, onto the fifth interval, which belongs on string five, fret seven. 
And then going back to our root or our first interval, it's on string four, fret seven. This is it. This is the first inversion. Nice. We only have one more inversion to go. So sticking with the same idea, let's now create a chord using the second inversion, which is gonna be in this order. Five, one, three. Which means we're gonna have to put our fifth interval on our low string, which will put us at fret 12. Next string also gets fret 12. And then the next string after that gets fret 11. Boom! Right there we have our second inversion. My god! I think I get it! I'm a guitar master now! You're well on your way. Now, realize, whether you play this chord in its root position, meaning one is on the bottom, or you play the first inversion where the third interval is on the bottom, or the second inversion where the fifth interval is on the bottom, these are all technically the same chord, which in this case is an A major. I recommend you start getting comfortable playing these inversions as soon as possible, as it will open up all sorts of possibilities on the fretboard. That's some good information, Steven. However, how can I actually practice this? The most important thing is to be able to quickly and accurately switch to any of these inversions. Here are a couple practice routines that you can use that will get you switching your positions quicker in no time. Play each inversion strummed as a chord for four beats before moving on to the next inversion. Once you've reached inversion two, work your way back down to the root position. If you're feeling a bit spicy, you can attempt playing these chords broken before moving on to the next inversion, meaning give a little space in between strumming each string, like this. Don't forget to play the chord with other root positions other than A, and don't be afraid to explore playing these inversions all over the neck. You'll be a shredding guitar master in no time. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for sticking around. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know if you like guitar lessons like this. Ugh.